speech, hate speech and violent misinformation. And hate, oh. hate speech is still widespread. Wow, you seem like a regular barrel full of laughs. Hate though. speech, yeah. hate speech, hate speech. Regulation, regulation. Try the fish, ties. <laughs> my, 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 look, my flower squirts water. What an absolute hack. Here's the thing. I actually, I find John Oliver funny uh, and dangerously wrong. Yep. I want to know uh, people, if I'm alone, do you have entertainers on the completely opposite side of the political spectrum of whom you're a diehard fan? Can you separate the art from the artist? Where does it start to bleed in? Comment below, I want to know. Uh, because this is the latest John Oliver segment, takedown segment, I guess you, you, you call it. Uh, you know what? Let's just roll the clip and uh, let's get into John Oliver's latest takedown. Take hate speech against Muslims, and especially the Rohingya, flourished on uh, Facebook. Here we go. Posted by military leaders and politicians, as well as prominent Buddhist monks like Ashin Waratu. Okay, here we go. So this whole thing, by the way, so this whole <laughs> video, you watch this segment, there's kind of some jokes that seem sort of irrelevant. He's jumping from topic to topic. It's a lead up. And he's talking about what people hate most, obviously Facebook, right? Then using the old bait and switch to Islamophobia. I was wondering where it would come in. So he goes on to talk about this monk. This is this is important because we have to give you context how hateful he is, which is true. Uh, but is it unique to this one Burmese monk? Are there other people inciting violence on social media? And since we're talking about Islamophobia and is Islam, this is what's so important with the John Oliver segment. Yeah. Actually, ISIS successfully spreads more misinformation than any other suspended accounts on Twitter before they get banned. This is actually it comes from Stanford. The funny thing is, as we repeatedly have mentioned in the past, Facebook does have a legitimate problem with Islamic terrorists yes. inciting violence. But is that the focus of John Oliver's segment? No. The entirety of this segment is ISIS completely withheld. It's about Islamophobia. <laughs> ISIS gets mentioned, yeah. guess how many times? Zero. Zero. Not once. Instead, he drones <laughs> on about this, this monk's account with less than 400,000 followers. <laughs> Consider for a moment that Burma's population is 53 million. A Facebook page with 300 something thousand followers is hardly influential. And by the way, Facebook banned it. Yeah. So he, here's, they did their jobs. They did their jobs. Here's what's funny Oliver claims the problem is Facebook giving this monk a platform. But then he plays yeah. clips and overlays, and it turns out the monk is actually on the cover of Time Magazine and interviewed on 60 Minutes. So Facebook <laughs> bans the monk, but left-wing print and TV, the media, they, the media, they're perfectly fine giving him a platform. Again, there's nothing wrong with being critical of, of, of the monk. But these are the same people who claim that Charles Murray shouldn't even be allowed to speak or debate at a university yeah. because what Murray says is hateful. So why allow this monk on 60 Minutes if his speech is really that dangerous? Murato <laughs> had hundreds of thousands of followers on Facebook, and he used his page to wreak havoc, including spreading false accusations that a Muslim business owner had raped a Buddhist employee, a post that helped instigate riots in the if city of Mandalay in 2014, yeah. in which two insane. people were killed and around 20 others injured. And yet, despite repeated warnings about Waratu, Facebook didn't get around to banning him until earlier this year. Okay, so this is becoming, this is not becoming more and more clear. Yeah. Um, he spends seven minutes making jokes about Facebook and then, again, pointing out what most of us hate about Facebook. Now he spends... Not more than 30 seconds on any single topic. This is what, what John Oliver does so well. He does bounces this bait around, and switch yeah. where he just bounces around, bounces around, bounces around, and then all of a sudden the entirety of the, the remainder is Islamophobia and hate speech. Like, wait, yeah. what, was, what was I watching? I thought I was watching a comedy show. He's just talking about the Care Bears. Yeah. And it's like, Islamophobia, hate speech, Islamophobia for the, the rest of the video. That's what this is. Islamophobia. There it is. Let's and if it. that monk is responsible for people dying, shouldn't we call the cops instead of calling Facebook? Yeah, uh, you know what? Like, I know whenever right. I have a rapist in my house, I roll the dice and I give Zuckerberg a ring. <laughs> John Oliver equates yeah. hate speech with incite, inciting violence, yeah. and they're two very, very different things. But let's go to the next clip first. So how the. F did so much hate speech and violence inciting content stay up for so long? Because it's not like Facebook doesn't have rules. They have a lot of them. Hate yeah. speech. There it is. This is so yeah. telling to me. A comedian flippantly using the term hate speech Ugh. like it's a real thing. I don't know about you, but is this not just bone-chillingly scary to you when a comedian yeah. just uses yeah. the term hate speech and throws it out there? So we all, we all, like, there isn't even a debate on the idea of hate speech or restrictions of the First Amendment. They just completely skip past the First Amendment to, well, of course, yeah, we all, we all agree it's hate yeah. speech, and now how, how does Facebook enforce hate speech laws? They look to target and censor. And, and it's something else that's really scary to me. Like you said, he says hate speech yeah. and incitement to violence. Inciting violence. Yeah. Two very different things. Equating the two is moving the goalposts in a very dangerous way. All of a sudden, a joke becomes a human rights violation, right, Mike? Yeah. yeah. That's, exactly. I, yeah. Right? I think the only thing that's dangerous is when it incites violence. People say inc incitement to violence. It's not like, hey, I can't stand uh, Muslims in Burma. And someone goes, hey, I heard this guy on Facebook says yeah. he doesn't like Muslims, <laughs> so I'm going to shoot you. You didn't right. incite yeah. violence. Inciting violence is, hey, listen, I will I will reward you if you go and harm that person. Yeah. Paying someone to put exactly. a hit out on somebody else or telling people to go forward and actually commit an act of violence proactively. Right. You need to be really clear about what incitement what to is. violence yeah. is. Like, hey, punch him 
in the face for no reason other than he's Canadian. That's okay, a crime. Hold on. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> is that oh, a sorry. thing? So, see, if someone does that, that's is, a crime. Is that why you invited me to Texas <laughs> if, just to beat me? All right, Mike. <laughs> if someone comes. punches you in the face because I happen to say that I don't like Canadians yeah. and they find out that yeah. you are one, that's not my fault. It's them, yeah. It's You're it's, not exciting exactly. them. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's them. definitely them. Call me when that does happen, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next clip. You can quibble. You can absolutely quibble with where Facebook draws its lines and the broader discussion of private companies' policing speech is an important one, but the point is Facebook does have standards that are enforced in a number of ways. You quibble? <laughs> no, it's not a quibble. Speech is the central debate of our time. Where you line up on the ideas of speech, transparency, and consistency will tell us exactly who you are. I can tell you this. When someone gives you their opinion on freedom of speech or the First Amendment, when someone tells you where they line up with that fundamental worldview, I can almost invariably tell you where they line up on every single yeah. other fundamental issue of our time. It is an absolute litmus test. Yeah, it's foundational for everything. You can yeah. quibble over whether or not the First Amendment is, and I know now all of a sudden he sounds like some, he sounds like some cockney guy in a bar, a pickpocket, yeah. yeah. It's exactly what I It's just that I don't though. like him, and I know that would piss him off even yeah. more than giving him the benefit of his <laughs> London accent. All right, next clip. Hate speech is language specific. Okay. All right. Listen. Let's just huh. let's just to, just to uh. save you guys some time. Okay. <laughs> let's just show you. We have a montage to show you how many times he references hate speech unironically in the video. Let's just roll that so that we don't have to keep coming back to there it. You go. Viral rumors and hateful comments on Facebook. Hate speech against Muslims for those seeking to spread hate. Hate speech and violent misinformation. And hate oh. speech. hate speech is still widespread. Wow, you seem like a regular barrel full of laughs, Ooh, don't yeah. you? This is a fun mm -hmm. comedy. Yeah, hate though. speech, hate speech, hate speech. Regulation, regulation. Try the fish. Ties. <laughs> my, 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 look, my flower squirts water. What an absolute hack. Uh, <laughs> Could you imagine going to a show with this yeah. guy? I mean, I, I don't know. Do what, what would he talk about? One time and you're done. And does he does he does he then berate people who are politically correct who moan if he says something that's offensive? How do you how, how do you have a like to stand up? That's always funny to me when you see these self-professed sort of progressive liberal comedians yeah. and they tell a joke and the audience moans like, oh. Oh, quit being so sensitive. It's like, you're the one who told them to be. <laughs> they are because of you. You're living in the hell you created. Enjoy. It's like Orange County. Now there, this is nobody's fault. Yes, it is. It's your fault. <laughs> this is entirely your fault. By the way, hit the notification bell because subscriptions don't really mean anything on YouTube anymore. And apparently you might not even be notified if you subscribe. So hit the notification yeah. bell. Join Mug Club for the Daily Show. Uh, $69 students, uh, veteran active military. Okay, let's go to the next clip because I'm getting mad. I don't believe the Holocaust happened. Oh, yikes. Can someone please explain to me why what Charlie Rose did was so wrong? I wouldn't post that, but you can. George Soros invented mosquitoes. Hillary Clinton created AIDS. Yeah. Okay, so here's the, I, should, I should have explained the context before that. He goes on it's this fake Facebook ad, yeah. you know, that he's presenting. And, and listen, it's, it's, it starts with Facebook being full of bullcrap. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. we understand that. I think everybody agrees. Half truths. Yeah. He's trying to get uh, us all on the lies. same page here. Yeah. yeah. Or as the co-opted term that the left invented, as we know it, fake news. Ah. But again, the sleight of hand is something that he hopes people don't notice. So he takes what most of us joke about with Facebook, then segues into politics. But the only political points that you see there, conspiracy theories presented are not only radical and almost never actually expressed, yeah. by the way. Actually, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that uh, George Soros invented mosquitoes. Probably did Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but I understand they're using an extreme example uh, to make a point for comedy, okay? Like, I don't want to get on about that if we, if we want to consider this comedy. But if, if you look at it, the theories and all the, they, they, they are they entirely target and lampoon supposed right-wingers. How yeah. about peppering in some Donald Trump peeing on prostitutes conspiracies? <laughs> no? Antifa conspiring against the 1%? No? How about pointing out the absurdity of the, the Kavanaugh allegations? No? Pointing out that PolitiFact, WAPO's nopes who have been caught repeatedly lying or misleading or outright dishonest. And no, we're not going to talk about any of those things? Okay, so again, just beware the sleight of hand here. It's, like, it's just comedy. But you only do it from one point of view always. That's fine if you just tell your audience about it, you hack. Next clip. Facebook er drast. Disgusting. All right, okay, listen, we've had enough. Here's the thing. With this clip, I, I think all of us agree. Facebook is misleading. It really is a dumpster fire as it relates. Dumpster fire as it relates dumpster. to information. Uh, a, a matter of fact, I've felt that way since 2016, when the Gizmodo <laughs> article leaked that Facebook moderators were selectively censoring specific conservative pages, including yours truly. Yeah. So I've felt this way for a long time. You were on that list. <laughs> but back then, from the left, uh, not a peep. It's also interesting that self-professed comedians like John Oliver spend so much time just making these pleas to giant corporations to control and police speech. But when an actual abuse of free speech occurs, like, say, with Mike Ward here being put before a human rights tribunal yeah. for a joke, 
Not a peep. Did John Oliver come to your defense? No, he didn't. He no. didn't make a video about you that wasn't funny? No. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he, he was spending too much time uh, on this monk with 300,000 yeah. fans, yeah. apparently. <laughs> almost, almost 400. That monk stole my thunder. <laughs> that monk stole your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, the, remember the term fake, fake news was actually invented by the left after Trump was elected. Yeah. And it was designed as a tool to target Donald Trump, and then it backfired when Trump used it against them. Now, why? Could it possibly be? Here, here's one thing that's just crazy to me about the John. Oliver uh, situation. Yeah. Okay, so you're bitching about social media, and like you said, we all watch this on social media, but what's the alternative? ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN? It's entirely left-leaning. Yeah. <laughs> on social media, the right is, comparatively speaking, doing pretty well compared to traditional media. Now, of course, listen, there's a ton of crap on Facebook from both the left and the right, and I readily admit, and I tell the, we tell the viewers often to not get your news from Facebook. Yeah. Okay, what would Mr. John Facebook needs to control hate speech Oliver have as an alternative? <laughs> Again, ABC, CBS, the trend you see with John Oliver, and it bothers me, is that nearly every single takedown video he does is a plea for more government control. Think about this for a second. This is a comedian who's made it his, his mission. His raison d'etre is to put more control of your life in the hands of the government. At every single turn, find me one video, find me one single segment, or any, any idea where, where John Oliver consistency, consistently is advocating for more freedom, not less. This is what's crazy to me. None. This is the first generation not only of people, but comedians who are advocating for less freedom of speech. Is, yeah. Am I taking crazy pills? Yeah, has anybody looked down the road at how this story ends? No comedians, that's how it ends. Yeah. They, 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 <laughs> they, will, they will have a poster of Lenny Bruce up on their wall. <laughs> And then talk about needing to police speech. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but yeah, guess, guess, where, guess, where we found that, guess where I found this video on YouTube. And here's the thing. Outside of this general sort of authoritarian plea from John Oliver, um, he never provides any solutions, no, ever. Of course not. Instead, it's just, you know, so there's someone has to do something. That's what it is. And it's usually the case left that somebody is the government and something is more control over your life. So, yeah, listen, fake news is a real problem on social media. Uh, again, both the right and the left. How can you guard against it? We want to offer some solutions here at Lighthouse Crowder, and I've said this quite a few times. Create a news and media list. Yourself, don't rely on Facebook. Set bookmarks and favorites, and for every single right wing source, have a left wing source. So, for example, I say hit the notification bell on this channel because subscriptions don't mean anything. The very next show you watch should be John Oliver's or Vox or The Young Turks. I don't care. Just Ugh. pick whichever one you can handle for the most amount of time. And get a beer. Put Fox News in your newsfeed. Great. Next needs to be HuffPo. Breitbart, next one needs to be Slate. Do it yourself, curate a news feed where you have right, left, right, left, right, left. And avoid any news sites, by the way, claiming to be unbiased like CNN or Washington Post. It's impossible, they're almost always lying to you. Yeah. Get both sides of every single story and you'll be more educated than 99% of the population. Tell everyone else who's watching this to try doing the same. Not only will you be more educated, but hey, it didn't require sweeping government censorship or corporate speech control. Sorry, John Oliver, ain't that a bitch? Hey there, YouTube viewer. You like Samantha B? Of course not, because you've actually made it to this end card. You are a miracle of the internet. I would say subscribe or hit the notification button, but I don't really know what that means on YouTube. You might not get notified anyway, but you can join up at ladderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. That's mug with this wonderful hand etched mug, and you get to watch not only clips, but the full one hour daily show every single day. That was redundant because I said daily, but every single day, but we're gonna keep it anyway because we shoot these end cards a whole lot in one afternoon. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel with this one.